CM Punk addresses the crowd after getting booed out of the building at AEW Collision. Sting and Darby Allen's forbidden door partner has been revealed. Could a former WWE star be a part of AEW All In? And a WWE couple renew their wedding vows. Hello and welcome to the Soul Sunday News here at What Culture Wrestling with myself, Andrew Pollard. I hope you're doing well. We've got lots of wrestling talk. Collision Week 2, Part 2, the second episode of AEW Collision aired last night or very early this morning if you are here in the UK. And it was a very notable night for CM Punk. Every night is a notable night for Crazy Phil. Um, of course, CM Punk made his, uh, his AEW return last Saturday at Collision, the premiere episode, then appeared on AEW Dynamite. Caused some people to get a boo-boo face and go home in a bad mood, which just sounds absolutely daft. Get over yourself, grow up. Um, but anyway, last night, CM Punk, FTR and Ricky Starks took on Switchblade Jay White, Juice Robinson and the Guns in the main event of AW Collision. And Toronto was not very kind to CM Punk. Now, of course, last week's Collision and last week's Dynamite both were held in Chicago, the United Center. And CM Punk is beloved in Chicago. Even then, there were a sm- I mean, it wasn't a 100% positive uh, reaction to CM Punk uh, in Chicago, but like 90% of people Oh, here in Toronto, it was a very different, um, a very different beast. Heavy, heavy booze. There were some cheers, of course. There's, there's, this is how things are going to be, I think, for CM Punk in markets that aren't Chicago. There's going to be mixed reactions, and it's how AEW deal with it, um, which, to be fair, Collision, I thought it, everybody involved handled it perfectly. CM Punk lent into the reactions. The AEW uh, commentary team, Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness, uh, I will get to those as a question coming up about those uh, shortly, uh, they addressed the elephant in the room. Now, if this was WWE, it would have been, oh, this is bizarro land in Canada, or they would have just completely ignored the whole situation. AEW, though, on commentary, they addressed that CM Punk, that there, there, there was a negative reaction to him here. Um, so how did CM Punk react to this after Collision went off the air? Well, he got the microphone and he addressed the crowd. And in typical CM Punk fashion, even this is something that's got people talking. He didn't really say anything particularly bad, but it's just like, huh, I see what you did there, Phil. Uh, yeah, he got the mic and basically said that he took responsibility for the loss. Now, the loss here was Ricky Starks getting pinned by Jay White, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring. That was how the main event went down. CM Punk said, as the captain of the team, he takes responsibility for that loss. Uh, and then he went on to say that, how did he word it? There was a video that, that's, that well, I mean, a few people have put videos. I know Denise Salcedo in particular, there was a video I saw from her uh, recording of this uh, post-collision address. Uh, and the wording of it was, basically, it was a case of, uh, he took responsibility for the loss, he, he loses sometimes, but they'll come back and keep on fighting just like the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it's kind of this, like a backhanded compliment that the, the Maple Leafs, because they were in Toronto, the Maple Leafs, yeah, uh, history of choking. So, uh, and the way that Punk did it was like a spring in his step, like a, at a boy, I'll keep on fighting like the Maple Leaves. It was all just a, a little cheesy, a little tongue in cheek. And again, obviously, again, this morning, it has got people talking because CM Punk, that's what he does for <laughs> you love him or hate him. The guy gets people talking. The guy brings in ratings. As we saw, the, the last uh, episode of Collision, the, well, the premiere of Collision, did a really strong number. Now, whether that maintains, we'll have to see from this. There's, there's nothing to base is Collision a success yet? We can't really say because it's been one episode in terms of ratings. So see how the ratings for week two do. And then even then, it's like, well, that's leading into AW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door, which is tonight. So the next few weeks is where we can gauge how much of a success um, a Collision is and how much of a draw CM Punk is. I, I think they'll be fine. It's just Saturday night. It's Saturday night's all right for fighting, according to Elton John. But people have things to do on Saturday where maybe they don't want to sit inside and watch professional wrestling. Or like me, they get up at... 4.30 a.m. to watch it before work. Yay. Um, right. Sting and Darby Allen will be teaming with, drumroll, it's not Bill Goldberg. It was never going to be Bill Goldberg. Some people speculate it'd be Bill Goldberg. It ain't the man. It is indeed. Tetsuya Naito. Now, this, once it was announced on, on Dynamite on Wednesday by Darby that there would be, um, basically, because, of course, Chris Jericho, Minoru Suzuki, and Sammy Guevara will be taking on Darby Allen Sting and a mystery opponent with Darby teasing that, hey, Chris, you've made a lot of enemies over the years. So people were thinking, ah, Goldberg. They, they had that beef in WCW behind the scenes. They had some beef in, uh, well, <laughs> Jericho tried to get a program going in WCW, but Bill was not having any of it, but it made it very entertaining TV on Jericho's part. Uh, then there was a scuffle they had backstage in WWE. They worked together in WWE. So people thought, hmm, 
Goldberg. Tony Khan has said he'd be interested in Goldberg. Goldberg's talked about how he wants a retirement match or a retirement run. It was never going to be Goldberg. It was always going to be... Well, it wasn't always going to be Naito, but to me, Naito seemed the logical... Uh, because, I mean... <laughs> He's, he's a massive deal, said to Unito. Um, he does feel like he's cooled off a little bit in the last couple of years. I'm not going to deny that. But it just felt like he's he's a big deal in terms of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he's not on the card yet. And he has beef with Chris Jericho from years ago. 2018, in fact, it was, where Naito lost the Intercontinental title to Jericho, which then Jericho won on a six-month reign as the IC champion New Japan Pro Wrestling, which sounds like a pretty impressive reign. He only, only defended it once, which is against Evil, which wasn't up to much. And then Naito got it back at Wrestle Kingdom, what, 13? I think it was, the, the following January anyway. But so the point being, there is previous there between Jericho and Naito. So that'll be fun to see. It's just, that's the, the joy of these shows. Of, of To be fair, to, one of the joys of AEW in terms of the company's approach to working relationships with other promotions. Um, but part of the joy of Bidno is he's like, just the random lineups where it's like, who would have thought, say, you know, four years ago, before AEW was was a thing? Now, um, Darby Allen had been seen in, in Major League Wrestling as at MJF, uh, which we used to get. Well, we still get that here in the UK. So, like, say Darby had been seen by some people who watched MLW, which I, I appreciate isn't many, but Darby had been seen. So you'd say, like, well, <laughs> in a couple of years' time, we're going to have a brand new wrestling promotion ran by a billionaire um, where you have Darby Allen teaming with Sting, who at that point was retired, uh, teaming with Tetsuya Naito. That's these are the, the craziness of Forbidden Door. And it's 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 cool to see, man. It's it's um very, very cool to see. And what might be cool to see is Davy Boy Smith Jr. could have a role at AEW All In. Now that is the the, the UK pay-per-view August the 27th from Wembley Stadium. Of course, Davy Boy Smith Jr. is old man is of course the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Um, and Davy Boy Smith Jr. is Harry Smith, but I'll just call him Harry for this because it'll make things uh, less confusing, pal. Uh, but yeah, there's a report in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the latest edition, uh, where Dave Meltzer has noted that there's a chance that Harry could come in. Uh, it's There's not been any formal discussions at this point, but it's something that AW might look to do before All In gets here, which is, again, I mentioned August 27th. So you've still got, you've got a couple of months, you've got basically two months to put something together if you want to bring in Harry, who is, I'm not, just, God, man, it's, he's, the, the fella seems to get such short shrift these days where, I mean, there was that kind of the weird WWE return during the pandemic where he wrestled the SmackDown Dark match. There was an interview that aired on WWE Digitals. And then he just got released. Now, supposedly there was a plan that he was going to head over to NXT UK. That folded, that company folded NXT, well, that brand folded NXT UK. Um, and then there was talk of him maybe going to main NXT or on the main roster. And then he just got released. And it's like, what was the point of that? Absolutely daft to bring him in, just to, just to do nothing with him and then release him. But uh, yes, uh, Harry Smith, David Boy Smith Jr. is, uh, I believe he's a free agent. He is working dates for MLW at the moment with uh, the Billington Bulldogs, the, the nephews of the Dynamite Kid. Um, so he is working in MLW, but I'm not, I believe he is still a free agent technically, so he could go and work wherever he wants. Now, he's he's been everywhere, the, the Bulldog Jr., where he's been to, obviously WWE, he's had uh, two stints there um, as part of the, uh, the the Heart Dynasty, that I think they were called at the time. Is it the Heart Dynasty? I know that it was the Hart Dynasty in uh, in MLW with Brian Pillman Jr. and um, oh my god, crazy! Oh my god, Teddy Hart. There we go. I was thinking, who's the, the crazy one? Teddy Hart. Yes, of course. Um, but yeah, I think it was a Hart Dynasty with anyway with uh, with Tyson Kidd and with with Natty. So yeah, he's been in WWE. He's been in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's been in All Japan Pro Wrestling. He's been in Pro Wrestling Nowhere. He's been in the NWA. He's been in MLW. He's not been in AEW yet. So now, now the, the speculation here from um, the Observer doesn't necessarily mention that Davey Boy Jr. would have a match, just he'd have a presence at All In. Of course, this is 31 years since the Bulldog wrestled Brett the Hitman Hart in the main event of SummerSlam 1992 at Wembley Stadium for the Intercontinental title. One of the greatest matches in WWE history. One of my favorite matches ever. Um, in fact, there's a poster of it right over there. Um, and it would there, there is a lot of sentiment there in terms of Wembley Stadium, Davy Boy, Wembley Stadium again. Here we are, 31 years later. AEW's first big show in the UK. Well, first show in the UK. Davy Boy Jr. makes sense. Um, the, the key thing there, though, uh, which some people may overlook, is that this isn't the same Wembley Stadium as it was that, that the Bulldog and Brett wrestled in back in 1992. That stadium was not down in, I believe, 2002. So this is a new Wembley Stadium. But hey, the, the point remains the same. Uh, now, one last news story to, to wrap up this portion of the Souls on the News. And Bianca Belair and Montez Ford this weekend renewed their wedding vows. Uh, five years, a five year anniversary. So they headed out to Las Vegas uh, where they renewed their vows. Bianca took to Instagram to 
show off a load of photos of this. Look like they're having a blast. Obviously, I mean, if you're not having a blast when you're renewing your wedding vows, why are you doing it in the first place? Why are you married? But <laughs> um, they, they are having fun. Uh, congrats to them on the uh, on the renewal of their vows, and I'm sure they're gonna have a. But I'm, I'm really intrigued to see where things go for the street profits. Side note, there, I uh, was just rambling away uh, on WWE television because they're kind of in a rut at the moment. There's been rumors of a heel turn. There's been rumors of a heel turn from Bianca Belair, which she's kind of been leaning into on TV in the last few weeks. Um, so I'm, I'm intrigued where these, or the three of them, go from here on out. But hey, congrats to Montez and Bianca. Now, right, let's get to your Twitter questions as I look to uh, attempt to wrap this up. Uh, right, where do I go here? Twitter would be a good start. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants with these at the moment, these Twitter questions. Well, let's just read them out. Sean Finchhausen's got in touch. Hey, Sean. I'd love to see Dustin Rhodes win this year's Owen Cup. Could you see it happening? As he said, this is last year. What a fitting way to end it, in my opinion. Uh, it would be it would be nice to see Dustin ride off into the sunset with a, a, a big victory behind him. And I, I'm also I'm very much liking how big a deal they're making the Owen Field this year. They did last year as well, but just particularly the men's side, the, the video packages they had on uh, on Collision last night. It's like yeah, this this feels like it means something. It feels like a big deal. And if it, if the talents make it feel like a big deal, you you take it yourself and perceive it as a big deal. So yeah, as for Dustin, it'd be a nice way to end his career. It'd be really nice. Um, and obviously, uh, Dustin Rhodes is somebody who worked with Owen Hart many a time. So it would be nice. I don't think he's going to win, though. Um, I'm kind of pulling for Ricky Starks, man. Hey, I'm always pulling for Ricky Starks. Absolute. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's that's my pick for that. Hector Garcia, the third gone touch. Um, hey, Hector, it seems like Roman isn't losing his title for WrestleMania. It also feels like Cody should finish the story at WrestleMania. Do you think the path to heating Cody Roman up again to get a rematch is for Cody to win the Rumble, but this time from number one? That is one way to get there. For me, though, I feel that Roman is losing the belt before WrestleMania. Um, I, I, I don't know. I've got the Royal Rumble there, man. Because I think, to me, it's terms of the, the Royal Rumble winner, I want to see Gunther. I, I'd say have him drop the IC title towards the end of the year, maybe even at the Royal Rumble against, I'd say, Damian Priest. It seems like a really good fit to me. And if you did do it at the Rumble, you can still have Gunther enter the Rumble and go on to win it. And then he challenges for the, the World Heavyweight title. Oh! I have a belt. If Cody's won his title by then, then yeah. But basically, Gunther gets a big world title match at WrestleMania and he wins, um, which is nothing to do with Cody Rhodes, really, <laughs> or your question. But I think, yeah, I, I can I see Roman. He's not going to lose it at SummerSlam. I'm, I'm kind of thinking Jey Uso versus Roman at SummerSlam, which will be great, or Jimmy Uso versus Roman at SummerSlam, which will be great. But I, th I, yeah, so I don't think Roman's losing the belt then. But I just, I can't see him keeping it till Mania. I can't see that the Cody story being held because it will be Cody that will beat him for the title that's that seems like it's a given it's just how you get there and I don't think you can hold off on the Cody story until Wrestlemania it just feels but again I, I'm, I'm enjoying what they've done with Cody he's so over at the moment it's it's, it's ridiculous man it's daft how uh, how over he is with the crowd and our next question is Mitchell Gillum's got in touch uh with the be bringing back old pay-per-views premium live event names back which one would you bring back I'm a huge fan of Armageddon and a judgment day uh if i could bring back a pay-per-view name bad blood's always a, 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 a don't know i know i'll start as an in your house that, that's always a cool name um judgment day i don't think you can now because you've got the judgment day faction so it would feel a little bit i don't know stepping on the judgment day factions toes or a little bit kind of too on the nose if you were gonna build it around judgment day but i suppose you could i mean really ripley's dominating if, if priest gets some big wins if bal is kind of been, he's back in the main event scene at the moment and Dom is Dom so you, you could kind of have a Judgment Day pay-per-view I guess um, Armageddon No Mercy was always that was always a cool one um, I always enjoyed that um, and also the classic video game as well so yeah I maybe go with with No Mercy that would probably be my uh, my pick on that one uh, Richie Harris got a touch oh what a photo that is uh, how do you feel about the commentary team with Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness personally I prefer a two-man boo format in the meantime here's Ollie and Thea enjoying dog friendly ice cream at the Lake District what a photo. Thank you very much for sending that in, Richie. I hope Ollie and Thea enjoyed very much their ice cream uh, and a Lake District. Lovely place. Lovely uh, corner of the world. Um, right. There will be, uh, after I get done with this, I'll be writing ups and downs for uh, for last night's AW Collision. Simon Miller will be on the video for ups and downs, of course, um, which I believe is actually going to be dropping tomorrow, possibly later today. Um, but anyway, in the ups and downs, there will be lots of love for the two-man commentary team of Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness because they're great. They're brilliant. They sound 
it, it differentiates Collision from the other shows because the other shows, the commentary teams, it just, it sounds too similar. Even though, the, I mean, the commentary teams on Rampage and Dynamite aren't the same, but it's just, there's the same vibe. There's the same voices. Um, not all the same voices, but it's just, there's the same voices. It feels a bit samey. Um, just Rampage is obviously slightly inferior in terms of what happens there and, and, and whatnot. I mean, you always get decent, really good wrestling on Rampage, but it's just like, it's the afterthought show. Um, but, you know, I, Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness have been brilliant. Obviously, They've had chemistry for years, going back to when they worked together in Ring of Honor. And they're both very good. I mean, <laughs> Nigel McGuinness, when he was in WWE, was fantastic. And seeing Taylor made to be, he was just putting him on Raw or SmackDown. He'd be great. He'd be great in the, the, the Cameron Patrick role, I think, even. Um, but then, I don't know, he, bring, he does bring the colour. But I, I think you could, you could, anyway, he's not with WWE now, so I'll stop that part of it. But yeah, the Kevin Kelly's been great with the work he does with New Japan as well. Uh, and just, I think, uh, personally, I always prefer a two anyway. Uh, I just think Bobby Heenan, Gorilla Monsoon, man. Like, fantastic. Uh, right, uh, the Grant Perkins got touch. Hey, Grant. I hope you and Eva are well. Uh, when Bron Breaker finally gets his main roster call up, if Braun Strowman is still about, who gets the name tweak into what? <laughs> or will we have the very similar sounding Braun and Braun? Ooh, well, I, I did see that uh, Braun, uh, Braun Strowman's recently undergone neck fusion surgery, so that's him out for the rest of the year, pretty much. So he's not to be back on screens too soon. So and best wishes to him in his recovery from that. That's major, major surgery. Um, so, and I think Braun Breaker will be back on TV before Braun Strowman does. I, it's it's a very, it will be a very Vince thing to change their names because they sound too similar. Um, which means it very, very well may happen. I mean, you could Bronson Breaker, if you, but then you've got Bronson Reed. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Stein a bit doesn't come into it because it's the Bron you've got the problem with, not Bron and Braun, nothing to do with Breaker or, or Steiner. But no, I, I like to think they keep them the same. I like to think they keep them on separate brands. And I, yeah, uh, it's, it, I just, I, I, I'm I'm really eager to see what they do with Bron Breaker on the main roster. He's he's killing it at the moment in NXT. I'm in no immediate rush to see him if they want to keep him there for a little bit longer or even for the rest of the year. Fair enough, I'm, I'm cool with that. But I do think we'll get to see him maybe. I, th I wouldn't be surprised if he gets called up in and around SummerSlam, maybe just after SummerSlam. Ah, but anyway, there's more videos floating around here to go and check out. Uh, as mentioned, Simon Miller, I believe, will be back tomorrow with the ups and downs. Um, I've been Andrew Paul here at What Culture Wrestling, the Solo Sunday News. I hope you have a great day. Uh, have the best possible day, whatever you're doing. And I will be back. Actually, I will be back in the week with a video review of AW Fight Forever. It's been recorded. I've been playing it for a few days. Well, a week or so now. I cannot say anymore. Have a great rest of the day.